my channel is already very much a magazine, just like a potpourri of all the things in my life, and today's video is extremely that way, we are going to take a look at my brand new, completely renovated, most used room in our home, um, which happens to be our playroom. And I also took my camera along and vlogged some of the DIYs I did for this room that you guys can use to transform any space in your home. It doesn't have to be a playroom. Yeah, you can look forward to all that in this video and more. It's sponsored by Daily Harvest, so there'll be a little bit of cooking in here as well. Let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, I am drinking a frozen dirty ice chai, which you guys can see how I made in a previous video. And I got this mustard colored boucle sweater from Dollar General of all places, so don't sleep on that. So let me show you the before footage of this room. We moved into this place two years ago and we just plopped and just moved everything in and tried to make the best of the situation. Little did we know that this room would become the most used room in our home, despite it being also <laughs> one of the ugliest. And so finally, we decided to make it a priority to redo it and make it feel like our space. And so let me show what you what we were working with at the beginning. And believe me, it was not pretty. <laughs> okay, here is the before. It really cannot get much worse than this. Um, as you can see, it has really old ratty carpet that needs to be replaced. We have a rocking chair over here slash recliner. We have an old sofa here. The big window has a lot of potential, but right now it's not looking great. Over in the corner, I have this crafting area that we've just been dumping stuff here because we knew that we're gonna eventually move it. So <laughs> this all looks terrible. The toys are currently stored in these crates with the cushions for the lids. And then the books are in the wagon here. I didn't even bother tidying that up because, <laughs> hey, the before and after is gonna be unreal. And this washer and dryer thing is gonna go downstairs. We have some books I don't let the kids have on their own up there. Yeah, it's just about as ugly of a before as you can get. Um, it is a dining room. As you can see by the light up there, this is supposed to be a dining room. Um, but yeah, the before and after is going to be unrecognizable, I'm hoping. Especially even the ceiling's coming down. Josh is ripping out the ceiling, putting recessed lighting in, fixing some stuff in the bathroom upstairs. So this, for reference, is the before. Wow. <laughs> pretty simple if you have time but not a lot of skills this is a great idea for you it's very easy it just it takes some time let me show you what I did okay for this project I started by making a strip out of cardboard and I had tried this before in my office and I used string and the string kind of stretches and it, it doesn't work so use cardboard this worked like a charm I cut about a 12 inch strip off of an Amazon box um, and then I put a hole in the one end and that's where I was gonna put the tack into the wall. You will make tiny little holes that you'll have to patch later, but that's not a big deal. And then on the other side is where you will draw with your pencil, so you'll need a hole for the pencil as well. So you just tack it into the wall, and then you use your pencil to swing around into an arch. And I did mine 12 inches, so it was 24 in all, if that makes sense. And I made all my arches the exact same dimensions, just different heights. And then to make the sides of the arches, you want a level. You guys have to make these lines crisp and straight. I used a pencil and I just marked them off and I made sure that some of the arches kind of overlapped a little bit. You'll see the end product here in just a sec. 
For the colors for my paint, I kind of just chose different colors, like pulled out of the rug and like different colors that I wanted to feature and accent. All these paints are a Sherwin-William color that they do at Lowe's and I ordered them at 75% because I did not want the arches to like really bang you in your face. Like I wanted them to be, to be a little bit more subtle and I don't regret that decision. The one arch didn't turn out quite right, which I'll let you know about later, but you can get little paint samples for really affordable prices. And so I just took my little paint swatches and I moved them all around and tried to decide which colors I wanted for which ones. And I put way too much thought into this, honestly, but at the end of the day, it did turn out right like I wanted it. So, hey, I recommend this strategy. <laughs> and then I taped off the straight lines for each of the arches. You want the green frog tape. That is like an essential for sure. It's the one that works the best. It gives you nice crisp lines. And I just marked off three arches at a time. That way, you know, the tape wasn't getting in the way of the other arches. You'll see here in a second. So I'm gonna do three colors this evening and then I'll do the other three colors another time because you have to tape off on the edges. Um, and so I have these little stations set up and each one has a little mini hot dog roller and I like to get these velour ones. They leave like a really good finish. Um, and then I have a really small paintbrush just to get really precise on the edges. And then I'll use a bigger brush to like get further away from the edge and then roll in the middle with the roller. And then I have each of my paints laid out there. I love this whole stations thing. It was a lot to clean up at the end, but it was really nice to have three paint brushes going at a time. And since there was no cleanup between coats, it made it pretty easy. So my tip for actually doing the arch is to be just very slow, very careful, don't rush at all. It should be fine, honestly. Make sure you have a brush that doesn't have any little hairs sticking out and like getting paint places it shouldn't. Painting around that arch is the chance for it to look like a craft project and not like an expensive wall mural. So make sure you take the time to make it look really crisp. And then I like to go back in with a bigger brush just to get closer to that line. This step you could probably honestly skip if you wanted to just go in with a small roller, but I just like the control that the brush gave me. And yeah, I would probably do it again this way. And then for rolling it, I definitely recommend the short little rollers. They were really, really nice. And once I was done with each color, I would just cover each one with saran wrap just to keep the air semi out of it. And then I would come back in about an hour and do the next coat. And so that I did that three times with three colors. And then the next day I did it again three times with the other three colors. Then comes the best part once everything is thoroughly dried, pull off the painter's tape and you look at those beautiful crisp lines. There were a few places where it didn't work out. There was just kind of like slight feathering or something. And I just went back in with my white wall paint, which is White Dove by Benjamin Moore. And if you love any of these arch colors, I will definitely have all the colors linked down below in the description box so you can use them. But remember, I got them at 75% strength. So that's kind of what you're looking at right here. Okay, something that has been life changing, like truly like lifestyle changing in the last year with all the renovations we've been doing and just with like the general busyness of life is daily harvest. Picture a TV dinner that's actually good for you and also tastes amazing and something you can actually be excited about. Like, <laughs> I'll rather eat this than cook myself a lunch any day. Daily Harvest offers smoothies, oat bowls, my favorites, which are their harvest bowls and their flatbreads. They actually reached out to me and they were like, hey, do you wanna try our flatbreads? And I was like, eh, I think I'm good. I wanna stick with the harvest bowls, they're so good. And they're like, no, you have to try them. And honestly, they are Delicious, I love them so much. They're so easy to make and they get really crispy, like a nice flatbread consistency on the crust. And I find that they have a lot of the same like flavor palettes as they do with the harvest bowls. And it just tastes really good. I know you have to try things for yourself before you can like confirm if it's a taste that you enjoy, but they've all been so good. I get excited about all of them. And they are so easy to make. The ingredients come right on the packaging and you can see what you're getting. And then you just put them into a kettle and then I add just a little bit of broth. You could do water. And I just heat them up right there on the stove. They are so delicious. The ingredients are frozen when they're fresh. And <laughs> yeah, they're just so easy and quick as well. So I can like go off and wash out my paintbrushes now while this is going, just stir it around a little bit. I love their oat bowls for breakfast as well. 
I'm not really a smoothie girl, but they have a lot of delicious smoothies. You have to just look around on their really colorful website. <laughs> it will sell you right off the bat. You can choose from nine, 14, or 24 items that come weekly or monthly, and their flexible delivery gives you the ability to add items, change your box size or selection, or even skip weeks. They are gluten-free, dairy-free, and plant-based, and they never use gums, preservatives, or artificial anything. Okay, this looks almost ready, and I like to just put mine right back into the bowl again so there's no dishes to clean up or anything. Oh, look at that. See, there's that nutritional yeast. I'm doing this left-handed so you guys can see. And I think I'm gonna just add a little bit of baby Swiss because I just love cheese with my like sun-dried tomato flavors. Yep. This is always going to be one of my favorites. I always have a couple of these in every box I order. Even the texture is like perfect. Anyway, I do have a code for you guys. Megan40 is going to get you up to $40 off of your first box. So check it all out down below. It's in the description box. Daily Harvest has taught me that you don't need to compromise speed and flavor. You can have both at the same time. So yeah, I'm very happy with how all the colors turned out, even ordering them at 75%, not knowing how they were going to be, except for that last little blue one. It's very, very pale compared to the rest of these jewel tone colors. So I may go back in and go over it again with like a grayish blue that's a little bit darker and more muddy. Um, that was the only one that didn't turn out quite like I was envisioning. But overall, super happy with this wall mural. Very, very fun. And it's a great way to add some color to a space while still having some taste and sophistication, if you know what I mean. And I like the mid-century modern rounded feel that it gives. So many of the pieces in this room, I just happened to have flying around and not wasn't using. And so I saved myself a lot of money just by like shopping my home. One of those things was this faux plant. Um, if I want to plant this big in the toy room, I want it to be like child friendly. No, I mean, my kids stay out of plants, but guests, kids might not always be used to house plants. So Faux is the way to go when it comes to these floor plants. And then this sofa, I got it off of Amazon and for the price, I highly recommend it, honestly. I mean, sure, it's not the most comfortable. You're, it's supposed to like lay down. Is it like called a cheese lounge? No, I'm not sure what it's called. It's supposed to lay down and you can sleep on it. That isn't as comfortable. It's like a slippery type of faux leather, you know? But it's a really good sitter sofa for reading books to your kids and things like that. So far, we've been using it pretty hard and it looks great. I didn't want to invest a lot of money in such a trendy leather color. And so I decided just to try it, dip my toe in the waters of like that whole cognac color by ordering something off of Amazon. So I will link it below if it's still in stock. I would I would actually recommend it. The poof I got off of Amazon years ago, the rug is new and I had such a saga trying to find a rug that I liked. <laughs> um, I actually spent some money to return a rug that came through completely wrong. It was purple and bright orange, which I thought it was like way more terracotta colors and gray. Not at all as I was expecting. I got it off of Amazon and you can find it some other places too. I will link it as well as everything else that I'm mentioning that I can. So I'll stop saying about, I'll link it, I'll link it. You get it. It's all down there in the description box. This coffee table I had down in the basement. It has a little bit of water damage on it from a plumbing issue, but it's going in a playroom. So the kids are going to use it really hard anyway. So that is fine. And I just have a little speaker here for, I had it in my office, but my daughter uses it to listen to audiobooks. It looks really cute. Amazon find again. And I love this. It's decor, but it's also a game. It's dominoes. The kids can play with them, but they're also kind of cute as well. I have a candle that, stay tuned, will be coming to Fox Pharaoh in the near future. And then I just have some notebooks and things like that. This room, I forgot to say, is definitely going to change a little bit in the coming months as we welcome a baby on board. And babies take up lots of space and just they need more equipment and things like that. So this room is going to look a little bit different later on. And I just envision myself sitting here on the sofa, feeding my baby and reading books to the kids and things like that. The basket is a home goods find from several years ago and just some random throw blankets. The window seat area behind me is for sure one of my favorite nooks in our whole house. Our window has a very nice deep window sill and I was like, we are turning that into a window seat. And so I reupholstered it myself. It's super easy. Once again, you don't need a lot of skills and you don't even actually need that much time. Um, let me show you. It's one of the most easy projects to do if you're trying to dip your toe into the reupholstery world. Um, and I highly recommend this DIY for anyone. So my husband cut me some half inch OSB, which is like a type of plywood, I guess, um, to fit right inside the window seat. And that's going to be the frame or the base for the cushions. And then I wanted one inch thick 
foam, but it wasn't going to be coming in to Good Store, which is a local store near me, for another like month. So I made do with their half an inch stuff and just did two layers. So it ended up being an inch, but I had to work with two layers, which actually turned out to completely fine. You want to make kind of a sandwich. Lay your wood down, put the foam underneath, and then make sure you have like at least a two inch margin sticking out around the edge because this has to curl up around the wood. And then you want to get some upholstery fabric. Indoor outdoor fabric is great too. You could use regular fabric, but I don't know, like you can't really, you're gonna have to spot wash this. So you want to get something that's pretty sturdy and durable. And then you do the same thing with the fabric. You just trim out around the edge as well. And I did learn in doing this that if you can give yourself a bigger margin than I did here, like as big as possible, maybe like four inches, it would help a lot with the strength of your arms when you're pulling the fabric and the foam around. So just a tip there that I kind of learned along the way. And so I just cut that out. And so I had three layers. I had the fabric, the foam, and the wood. Then you grab a staple gun and you just start wrapping around section by section, piece by piece, go small, go slow, put the staples close together and take special care at the corners to make sure you're pulling with the same tension each time. And if there's a lot of extra bulky fabric or anything, you can trim it. It doesn't matter how pretty it looks underneath. Nobody's gonna see that, so don't worry about that. And I did learn that bracing the staple gun against the wood is actually the best way to do it, um, to really like push in, rather than what I'm doing here with like having the staple gun levitated in the air. That was a lot more work and a lot harder on my hands. Yeah, that's really that easy, guys. It takes some time and it takes the materials, but it really doesn't take a lot of skill. Any of you could do this. I've done this method on upholstering wooden chair seats. Our old toy boxes had little seats on them that were covered like this. Yeah, it's just a really handy little technique to have in your back pocket. And since I had gotten Josh to cut the wood just slightly smaller than the window seat, everything wedged in really nicely and fit perfectly. I haven't decided yet if I want to Velcro it down to keep it there or not I'll decide more as we use it but for now it hasn't really been sliding around at all because it's kind of wedged in there and the kids love this space so so fun and there's always squirrels to watch and yeah just a great view of our backyard the bookshelves are from Amazon I was trying to find the ones off of Ikea and they were out of stock so I settled for these Amazon ones they're a little less deep than I was hoping for but they still hold enough books and I think it's actually gonna serve us really well to keep books a little bit more pared down. These leather looking planters I got off of Amazon. Oops, I see I have the tag still on the one here. And then the little tins I got from Village Farm and Garden Center. And the pillows are just random, I found throughout my home. With going with such a colorful color palette, I felt like I could pull a lot of different items in. And you're gonna see these posters all throughout the room. I got them off of Amazon, and then my husband just made these little wood um, shims i guess or like little frames that i just hung them from and that was a really really easy diy okay this is hardly a diy but i just wanted to show you how i like to hang posters like this they come in the mail all curled up and curly so you kind of have to work with that but josh cut me little strips that were about one inch and then like a fourth an inch thick and he made sure they were half an inch wider than each canvas that way you had a little lip on either side sticking out just to make it look a little more expensive Use some scotch tape to tape the canvases to the wood and then just some command strips that I cut in half on top of the wood yet to hold it to the wall. It was really that simple. And then I did use more scotch tape again at the bottom just to keep the canvases from curling. I'm imagining I will take that off eventually once these canvases kind of relax. I keep saying canvases. You get what I'm saying. These prints. Once they relax, then they will kind of just hang there on the wall nicely. But for now, I want to kind of train them and get them to lay flat against the wall. Super easy and like the cheapest option I've found yet. So yeah, use that method. I really like that whole look of like actual paper, not everything behind glass. With this whole more like approachable boho and playroom type of vibe, I just wanted the paper texture, if that makes sense. This corner I'm sure will get filled up with like a baby swing or something eventually, but for now I just have the rocking horse and this fun little wooden piece. I'll try to link it below. It's really, really fun. Um, it's made by a small family owned company, so we've been really enjoying that. There's a lot of things you can do using that toy, you know, imagination with kids. This kid's table turned out so good. It was completely free to me because we already had it. And we actually, well, let me just show you what we did. Dad. So it is Saturday and we have a ton of projects going. Here is the door. You guys will recognize it. See, that's the door that goes in my office. And this is the back side. 
So we're gonna paint this the color of the wall so it just kind of blends in. And then I might put some like posters on it and stuff, like educational stuff for the kids. Josh, you remember buying this? This was gonna be for our um, kitchen table and we realized how tiny it was. And so we never used it for our kitchen table, but our first house is pretty small. So what we're gonna do is turn this into a kid's table. I'm gonna paint the legs white and I'm gonna put some kind of clear coat on top, which look at this. I'll, what, sand, I'll sand it's it. It's like damaged? Oh, you'll sand it off. That'll be I'll, nice. I'll sand this. This top is absolutely no finish to it at all, so it'll just soak up marker and everything. So I need to find out what I can put on here that's not gonna turn it even more yellow, like polyurethane. I've seen disaster stories, so I don't know. I'm gonna go talk to the guy over at Fisher Paints. He seems to know a lot about that kind of thing. And then Josh is gonna saw off the legs and make them the height for a kid's table. I'm so excited. It's a free table because we're using what we have. I mean, <laughs> it's Josh's blood, sweat, and tears that are going into it, I guess, so technically not free. So after giving this tabletop a good sanding to get off any marks and divots and things like that, we tried to make sure that it was gonna be the proper height for the kids' chairs that we had that I got at a reuse it store. Some of them I did, and the other ones I'd gotten on Amazon. So we just wanted to make sure it was the proper height that um, little kids' legs could fit underneath and that writing wouldn't you know, give Ivani a backache or anything like that. And then Josh took the legs off and he ended up taking off the skirting around the bottom of the table as well because it was just getting too low and touching Ivani's legs. So he took that off completely. I think it gives it a nice modern look. And then he cut the bottoms off till they were the proper height or you could cut off the tops as well, but we decided to go with a chunkier look and it was time to paint them. So Josh got the legs trimmed out and now so I can paint them like every single time like all four sides He's gonna screw them into a board for me So I don't have to worry about like rotating them and like every half hour like painting two of the sides. You know what I mean? This trick worked super well I'm so glad I didn't have to keep rotating the legs or just painting two sides at a time Screwing them into this board was definitely a time saver and I just painted them with our trim paint because it had a durable finish to it and that is in Chantilly Lace by Benjamin Moore. I just love it so much. The kids are gonna be here a lot, I can already tell you. I'm sure this tabletop will eventually get covered in markers and stuff like that, but for now we're enjoying how nice and clean it looks. And we did cover it with like a clear coat then. I believe it was like a water-based matte clear coat because I didn't want it shiny and I didn't want any color to it either. Um, and so it did not turn it any more yellow than it already was. Pine is naturally a little bit yellow. But for a free item, I think it looks very expensive and it, it's gonna do the job. Also, I got this little art caddy off of Amazon as well. And I like the fact that it's a Lazy Susan. right now that this wall above the table is probably going to change over time right now I don't have kids in school I'm not like we don't need a whiteboard or a pegboard or a chalkboard but I have a feeling at some point that's gonna change and we're gonna want to do one of those three options here but for now I just have these botanical looking posters the chair is just our only recliner rocker that we have that's probably where I will sit a lot of the time to feed the baby or maybe I'll move it upstairs. I think it's gonna stay here. We really like it there. My husband likes to sit on it. It's the only reclining thing on this level of the house. And so he will sit there once in a great while when he actually makes the time to sit. And I also got this really cute floor lamp from Amazon. I love it. Um, I like how it gives like a soft light because it has like the filtered globe. Also this clock, believe it or not, I just found it in my basement. I was gonna use it for our Airbnb and then we decided not to turn it into an Airbnb. So it was just sitting down there waiting for a good spot. I can't believe how perfect the colors match. And then behind me here is the sliding door that Josh built into my office. And then on the back of it, I painted it white and we mounted a family growth chart. I'm so excited. I still haven't done the research yet, but I want to go find my records and Josh's records and mark our childhood heights on here. And then also do the kids. And we'll just try to keep it up to date every year as they grow. For the most part, the store will stay open. 
Okay, and then the most useful corner of this space is, where's the toy boxes? Where's the toys, Megan? They are in this cabinet here. I went a lot more in depth in a previous homemaking video where I organized it. I showed you everything inside. And since that video, I have now gotten the toys into their cupboards. Each child has their own drawer, so there's Ivani's and Fletcher's, and then I have a baby toy drawer for babies that would come, you know, if babies come, like my friends come and they have babies that need toys, or also our baby eventually when they're old enough to play with toys. And then I have one more drawer as well that has more like PC games that, that just need to be consolidated into little bins and stuff like that. So it's working out really well so far. I love how the toys are hid away. They're easy to put away. It doesn't always look like this, of course, but it's very functional. It really is. I really like the concept. And not to mislead anyone, but we actually do have more toys than this. I have a box of books that I use for book rotation. I have another box of toys for toy rotation that I like to do, you know, every month or so. And then there's big toys and imaginative play things in the basement that wouldn't necessarily fit in this room. And then each kid also has a small box of toys in their bedroom. And maybe I can go into more of a detailed video in the future with that. And then in the French doors above, we have craft supplies, we have art stuff, we have things for me, some books and audiobooks and different, like my printer, things like that in there. And so I love it. It was about $800 in all. I got the hardware from Hirsch and Timber and I just have a plant sitting up there. The ideal goal would have been floor to ceiling cabinetry, but that would have cost me another $1,200 to get it custom built. So I was willing to make the sacrifice. It, it holds a ton of storage. And at the end of the day, it's just stock kitchen cabinetry. Um, but I was so happy how my vision actually turned out. I did not want a toy box that could get knocked over or just like tripped over. It doesn't hold enough. You can't sort at all with one giant box. So yeah, I'm so glad Josh was on board with investing a little bit of money into getting something that works for our family. It's not completely done yet. There's a couple pieces of trim that we're still waiting on. Supply chains have been crazy lately. I'm sure you guys know. So there, that's why it looks a little bit unfinished in a few areas if you look really closely, but that will happen in a bit. I wanted to get this video out for you guys in case you were in the middle of trying to reorganize your kid's play area. fun to nose around, peek around, be a little bit nosy in somebody else's space. And I will have to keep you updated how this works with the different seasons of our lives. Right now, we're loving it. It works great. If you guys make any of those DIYs, I want to see them. Tag me on Instagram. Um, I'm sure they won't look anything like mine because we all have different styles, tastes, and homes. That's fine. I hope that it inspired you to, you know, save a little money, maybe have some fun at the same time and do something on your own. Thank you guys so much for your support on my channel and for watching. Check out Daily Harvest. I know you will love them. I order them even when they're not sponsoring a video. So yeah, thank you guys for being here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.